Hi guys, welcome to Hacking Koji. So, my name is Mike, and the reason I'm giving this talk is because I want people to hack on Koji. I want people to, to do fun things with it. I want people to make it do things that I haven't thought of. So, I'm going to talk about a couple different things that you might do that might be considered hacking Koji. Uh, there's a number of different places and ways you might do that. Um, uh, a little about me, um, I, I've been working at Red Hat since 2001. I started out doing uh, QA for Anaconda and uh, then became a release engineer foolishly and uh, then rewrote the build system foolishly, I guess. <laughs> and that eventually became Koji. Um, uh, on FAS, I'm Mike M. And Red Hat, I'm Mike M. So there I am. Um, Koji, raise your hand if you've used Koji, which is everybody in the room, I figured. Um, so you know what Koji is. Uh, you may or may not know that other people besides Fedora use Koji. Uh, Red Hat uses Koji. Red Hat used Koji before it was Koji. Um, and uh, CentOS uses Koji now not to build the core CentOS yet, but to, <laughs> to build uh, the community build the community builds that go on top of CentOS. Uh, Linux uses it. Amazon uses Linux. There's actually a long list, but I didn't want to get too busy with the slide. So. Um, and that's, and I don't even really know how people might be using it and not telling, telling me. Um, so why would you want to hack Koji? And I can think of a lot of reasons and you can probably think of more. Uh, generally it boils down to you want Koji to do something that it doesn't already do or at least doesn't already do easily. So uh, that might mean you write some custom scripts to run on your client. I do this all the time. I have an entire directory full of one-off scripts that I wrote to make Koji do this one weird thing this one time. And that's that. Um, so maybe you would like to do that too on occasion. Uh, so we'll talk about how you might do that. Uh, sometimes you want to do exactly that, not so much to make Koji do something, but to get Koji to tell you something to figure out what's in the data. Uh, there's a lot of data in Koji. It's been running builds for almost 10 years now, uh, Vault 9 and change uh, in Fedora. And so, I mean, you could get into the API and really pull some interesting data out of there that the web interface is not going to spoon feed for you. But in order to do that, you'd probably have to dive into the API or at least learn some of the more esoteric uh, CLI commands. Um, uh, interfacing with other tools and other infrastructure. Fedora has done a lot of this. You guys, we have it talking to the on Fed message. We have it talking to other Fedora tools, very important stuff. So some of you may well need to hack on Koji to make it work with the next bit of Fedora infrastructure. Um, uh, or you may just want to make Koji do something a little differently than it already does, make it look differently. Uh, there we have web theming and or add a new feature. So it's uh, there are a lot of different ways you could approach this. So before we get into what you would do, let's try to look at a big picture of what how Koji is structured. I made this diagram a long time ago, and then I realized that I don't think it ever. I couldn't find it. Have you guys seen this diagram before? Right. <laughs> I cannot, I don't understand how it did not propagate with the docs, but at some point it was in a document and I think it just fell out. And I, so I remade it last night, which <laughs> meant I wasted an hour in Escape. <laughs> but you know, uh, the, key, the key take home here with Koji is that pretty much everything happens in the hub. All right, the hub is the thing in the middle that, for the most part, governs access to all the data. If you want, you don't talk to the database, you don't talk to the file system for the most part, you talk to the hub and it does those things for you. Now, and all the pieces of Koji do that. The web UI is just an application that uses the, web, uses the hub to do things. Command line interface, it just talks to the hub. The builders, they just talk to the hub. 
a couple of exceptions, the blue arrows is a little cheating. <laughs> a little bit of cheating, that's why the blue arrows are there with the builders and with Kojira. Uh, builders that have to talk to the file system in order to run create repo. I hadn't found a really good way to, to, to have that work without having it mounted uh, read-only. Uh, and uh, Kojira, I can probably fix that at some point, but right now Kojira actually does the, it does the repo deletions itself. Um, but that's about it. That's a little blue arrow is cheating. Um, so most of the places you would hack Koji would be uh, writing your own thing to talk to the hub and make it do things. Maybe writing some plugins to the hub or the builders. Or maybe writing a new tool that fits in this diagram. Um, I want to talk about a few odd things about the command line. A couple of these are definitely hacking on Koji territory, and one of them is maybe not, but it's a really cool command line <laughs> command in the Koji command I don't think people know about. Uh, and it's nice you're going to hack on Koji to know about it. So, um, so first of all, uh, if you don't know all the, command, all the commands that Koji has, and there are a lot of them, uh, Koji Help will list them all. Um, I'm just going to talk about a couple. Uh, and this is the one that's not really hacking Koji, but uh, it's a real Swiss Army knife uh, for me. I use it all the time, and I don't think people know about it. The Koji list history. Um, so most every bit of data in Koji, not all of it, is, is versioned. It's, it ha they all have event IDs, and every time you make a change, like you tag a build, you don't you don't lose the knowledge of that build once it had that tag. It's still there, you know. Uh, so Koji can tell you, particularly with things like tag, tag, tag data, all the information about tags that ever work. And uh, you can hit that with list history. This is just one example. Just, just to, I did a list history of the dash, dash package Koji uh, after the past couple weeks. And you can see all the activity for the Koji package uh, in the past few weeks. If, without that dash dash after argument, you'd get <laughs> a very long stream. Uh, you, I don't have time to go into all the different options that this has, uh, I think. Um, There's a lot. Uh, and for the most part, the, uh, it will, each of these options sort of automatically limits the, the query to the appropriate sort of data. So if you put dash dash user, it's only going to query tables that have a user field, etc. Um, anyway, like I said, not really hacking on Koji, but it's a really useful tool. And if, yeah? Oh, I just want to comment that uh, you have application for bash. Uh, so if you do go to this history tab, tab, dash, dash, tab, tab, it'll show you all those also. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm a big fan of. I'm not sure if I, do I have that? W, dash, dash, and then tab, tab. I don't have it. Oh, <laughs> oh there it is. I was just taking, yeah. Cool. I don't know why it's like, it, it's very quick on my laptop. Uh, what are you, is that Probably because I've never used it, so it's not cached. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, I just like, I've always been very, I'm happy when there are things that have good shell completion, and Koji has good shell completion. Cool, I should probably make sure that's up to date. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so, I'm good. Yeah. Another interesting little thing that people don't know about with the command line is that you can do direct RPC calls straight from the command line. So this is a simple one. Uh, if you wanted to 
see the raw data for the package Koji, call and get package Koji, and you see that it doesn't really show you much name and ID, but uh, you get the picture. Um, now that we have the ID number instead of just the name for that package, uh, let's do a more complicated query. Uh, call is builds, and since you're, it's making a, you know, they call it, uh, shell syntax doesn't really lend itself to data structures, so I, I just fall into uh, accepting Python on the command line, which you have to be clever about coding, but you can do it. So, um, listing all builds, package ID 1181, which is Koji, I put a limit of one just to get the top one. Otherwise, it'd be, <laughs> it's a very verbose. Um, but it's a good way to explore the API. Once you start playing with the API, you'll find that you may sometimes want to just run, a, run, run, run these real quick just to see what they do, just to see the raw data, because the corresponding uh, command line doesn't quite do what you want it to or, does it, or, or is hiding some little numeric detail from you. And uh, also, the, the command line will actually list the API for you. I have abbreviated. I just <laughs> left one entry in there. Uh, but if you run Koji list API, you'll get the whole, the whole very long list of RPC calls. And uh, that's just one. It's uh, dynamically generated, introspectively. Um, all right, well, anyway, just a few notes about the command line for Koji hackers. If, uh, uh, let's get into Rumi, the Python lib, because for the most part, if you're going to hack on Koji, you're probably going to uh, do it in Python, I hope. We'll talk about other stuff later. Um, very simple example. Uh, Koji provides a, the Koji library, and it makes it pretty easy just to talk to Koji. Um, uh, you, gotta create, you need to create a client session object give it the URL of server you're talking to. I'm using the Fedora one here, uh, but you need different, different URLs for different servers. Um, I'm not doing authentication here. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not gonna talk about that in this talk, but you can see how authentication is done by, by diving into uh, the Koji client tool. Um, so just a simple, uh, get the package, so we get the ID, and then get all the builds. For this is basically what we did in the in the last in the last example, but we're doing it in Python. It's a lot nicer to do it in Python than in the shell, <coughs> and print it out. Um, is it possible to use the same in C somehow? Well, so okay, yeah, I'll get to other languages. So, the short answer: Yes, it's XMRPC. So, if you can do XMRPC, then then you can just do that. Um, more examples. Uh, for more examples, see the Koji client. There's lots of examples. There. For the most part, uh, there's no magic in most of the Koji tools. They pretty much just talk to the hub and say, do this. So if you want to know how the Koji client does something, just go have a look. It's probably just a couple, couple RPC calls. A lot of the a lot of the client commands are relatively thin wrappers around a, around an RPC call or two. So is the RPC API stable? Yeah, that's pretty stable. <laughs> yeah, until we, until we break it, which we'll have to do at some point because it <laughs> we have not broke we have not seriously broken the API yet. Added a lot to it, but uh, we've been very careful about not breaking. Uh, so, other languages, it is XLRC. We do use a null extension, which is uh, the most standard extension to uh, XMRPC. Uh, and that just is a new data type of nil or null or whatever, which is really missing. <laughs> especially if you're going to use it in a language like Python where nuns abound everywhere, uh, you really, it's a lot easier to, uh, to have the null extension. So, we use that. Um, uh, 
if you're doing it, if you're doing this with other languages, the nil extension may give you trouble. There's a number of XMRPC libraries that don't understand it. So make sure you have an XMRPC library that does. Um, or if not, be very careful that you don't make any calls that return any nulls. <laughs> um, one really nice thing you can do with, um, uh, with, with the command line is use the debug XMRPC option, which will cause it to output the raw debug data for every RPC connection that it makes, which is really handy if you're really trying to see the guts of how Koji is doing something so you can em emulate it in another language. Uh, as a re relatively psychotic example, um, this is making this is using the RPC uh, API with curl. Just put a bunch of put, put the XML request in a file and pass it to Koji with curl. And I would have put the output there, but it's uh, wow, it's really verbose. <laughs> um, how did I figure out how to do that? Um, So that will be the pretty output. Um, if I add debug XML to C, XML to C. <laughs> so you can see it posting the same thing that we passed into curl and getting this ugly XML out. It's uh, not a concise serialization language. <laughs> um, web themes is another way that you might play around with Koji and make it do different stuff if you you guys have used Fedora's Koji. That is themed. It is the, the Fedora Koji does not look like the default theme. So uh, what, what you can do with themes are you can override uh, all the static images you can, uh, and the CSS, and uh, you can add uh, extra extra inserts into the naviga navigational bar at the top and footer at the bottom. And with that, you can actually do a lot, especially if you put some JavaScript in, the <laughs> in that header. Um, so, and all you, have, all you have to do is once you uh, put that content under the themes directory, you just set Koji theme equals whatever you called it, and boom, it's gonna use that. And you don't have to copy everything. Koji looks in the default static directory first for everything that it's looking for, and if it doesn't find it, only then does it look in, it looks in the theme first if one is set, and if it doesn't find it, it falls back to the original static. So if you just want to um, uh, override the CSS, you can make a theme directory with only koji.css in it, and that will work just fine. Or if you just want to change the, the icon at the top right corner, just make it sure it's the same size, <laughs> unless, you also change the C unless you also change the CSS. But you can do stuff like that. Um, so this is pretty easy to do. Uh, doesn't require any coding really, unless you do JavaScript in your footer. Uh, and uh, and you guys seen uh, uh, I mean, this is an unthemed Koji instance on my laptop. Not nearly as pretty as the one you're used to seeing. Yeah. All right. Um, hub policy. Raise your hand if you're familiar with hub policy. Ish. All right. So uh, hub policy is a way uh, that you can configure the hub to control Koji's behavior in a number of different ways. It's uh, a very simplistic 
uh, configuration language uh, not uh, vaguely, uh, looks vaguely shellish, but it's really much dumber than that. Um, but you can control, with it, you can do a number of things like controlling who can tag where, uh, yeah, set some fairly complex rules for that. Uh, so if you, want, if you want only this small group of people to be able to tag this particular package and these particular tags with matching rules, you can set a policy that, that does that. Uh, uh, you can control who can manipulate package lists. Normally, the most of these policies have defaults. The default package list policy is only admins can do it, but you can change that. Um, there's a channel policy that determines what channel tasks go into, which is very useful if you want to uh, make sure that only the certain tasks only land on certain builders. And uh, it might be helpful to see an example. Um, so uh, there's actually, I linked the documentation. Uh, there's, there's, actually, uh, there's actually a doc on this that goes over the, um, the different policies and legible yet? Yes. Okay. Um, so, I mean, here there is a, um, a simple, a very simple tagging policy. Uh, kind of, it's a little bit strict, but uh, the default tagging policy is there is no restrictions apart from the tag permission settings that are completely separate from this. Uh, but uh, here is a policy that says that uh, admins can admins can tag, and other people can tag in a candidate, and other than that, no, you can't. Which is very strict, but maybe somebody wants that somewhere. Uh, you know, maybe if you have, a, I mean, maybe you have a system where uh, your regular users can only ta put bills into the candidate tags and you have another process that will move them out of candidate tags after some verification. So you could enforce that very strictly if you want a workflow like that. Um, there's a slightly more complicated one. Um, so you, uh, this one uh, locks, uh, 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 prevents tagging, um, Apple, uh, things that were built in the Apple tag anywhere else. So if you want to say keep Apple builds isolated from the rest of your Koji instance, you can lock them into their own tags. Fun uh, stuff like this. Uh, now, is this hacking? Well, maybe uh, because you can really you can really control fine grain what Koji is doing here, but you also. Um, You can add new tests with plug with hub plugins. So, and when you start doing that, then you can really start to control what happens. So, if you uh, if you don't like the built-in tests, you can add your own. And uh, just as an example of what Fedora is running with. Um, Fedora just has uh, a relatively short policy. Um, you can sort of see the format. Uh, each, each, it's a series of match lines. Uh, each match rule has um, uh, has a has a name and arguments, and uh, the double ampersand separates them into sort of means and and, but not exactly. Um, and uh, colon colon get, gets you to the uh, uh, result of the sort of policy. And it just, first match wins. Uh, again, very simplistic, but you can do a lot with it. Right. On to hub plugins, since I mentioned them in the last slide. Um, 
Hub accepts plugins. The, easy, the easiest things to do with Hub plugins are the, or at least the things that we have really uh, put hooks in to the code for you to do are to add new API calls uh, or add new policy tests uh, or hook into the callback system in Koji. Um, and there are a number of examples uh, of Hub plugins in the Koji code. Uh, Here is a more of a Hello World version. Um, so this is uh, really just a, uh, a plugin that hooks into uh, all the callbacks. There's uh, some decorators for doing that that are defined in the plugin module. Um, and all it does is log every callback that it receives. Which is, this is pretty much how the message bus plugin works too, except instead of logging it, it spits it out the message bus. <laughs> With, <laughs> there's a little bit more work than that, but that's basically it. <laughs> Message bus works the same same way, except there's a there's more cut. You, you know, got to manage the connection, the your timeouts, um, down to the uh, yeah. yeah. So it this does it hooks into the callbacks the same way, except it limits it only to the ones that start with post and uh, pretty much just takes that data from the callback and spits it on the message bus. Um, so writing plugins can be tricky because it, it delves into the, uh, the internals of Koji, uh, but the code's not that bad to read, I don't think. Um, just once you figure out where to get started. Um, and again, there are examples. So if you feel the need to write a plugin, and there's lots of good reasons to, uh, you know, I've, I've some, some examples, maybe ping us on Koji Devel. Um, it's totally doable and you can do a lot. Um, Builder plugins are maybe uh, the less, uh, the less things that we have specific hooks for plugins to use. Uh, the easiest thing to do with build a plugin is add new task handlers, which is granted terribly useful. So um, the, the example that we have in the Koji code itself is the run root uh, plugin that was added uh, recently for the Compose tools to use. For the, uh, uh, and uh, Actually, a bunch of setup, but um, Koji, the uh, Koji daemon just looks for subclass of base task handler when it loads a plugin. So if you subclass it then you just create a task handler. That's, you don't have to decorate or anything. Uh, and if you want to see examples of task handlers, just put Koji, it's, it's full of them. And I sort of, I think I've been mostly progressing in levels of complexity through here of things you might do. Uh, the, uh, the, when you get to the end and you can't make code you do what you want through any of those ways we're talking about, at that point you've just got to change the code, which you can totally do. Um, uh, it lives in Pagur. Uh, 
check it out, make changes, uh, to, to, uh, to use the make targets I've got here, uh, you, you'll have to commit locally first because uh, it uses git archive in the make file to, uh, to do the build. Uh, there's a test SRPM for real quickies that, would, that, that uses a directory, but uh, I mean, it's git, might as well just commit, right? Um, so just make the SRPM and do what you will with it. Um, uh, if you make changes to Kochi and you feel like you would like to share them with the world, uh, we're out there. Uh, as I said, we're on Pagura. Uh, we take pull requests. Um, if you're working on a really big feature, you might want to talk to us on Kochi Devel before you spend a lot of time on it. <laughs> um, and okay, so that went a little quicker than I expected. So uh, let me see if there are questions. If not, I can. Uh, yeah. Um, are there any like recommended ways to quickly set up uh, a running instance for like that environment, you know, like single all-in-one VM, or like small set of Docker containers, just like something to like throw on my laptop and like. Uh, so there we so like yeah, what, what's the name of it again? Uh, yeah, project. Uh, so there's there's two things. Well, right. so yeah, project doesn't work anymore. Yeah, exactly. So, but there's the thing that what, Koji, what, Dojo. Koji Dojo, which John Casey wrote. Right. Uh, it also doesn't work. Uh, it does. I, so I I never I, I never use Koji Dojo. I just I just install it on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> which which I, I think is is a valid use case, but I think the install doc is um, a bit much to rock um, at face value. If like you're doing something kind of on the edge, tangentially like a plugin. Also, uh, the, the you know the only. The only hard part about uh, installing for me really is getting the getting a damn cert set up, if, assuming you want to use cert off, which you do. <laughs> right. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it is a fairly, I mean, it's like loading the load a day. I mean, load a day. <laughs> I've never met anybody who, who uh, or, yeah, so far I don't know if anybody who's ever accomplished going from zero to running Koji without any previous knowledge of Koji or the build system who was able to accomplish it in less than a week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did it in two days. There you go. All right. <laughs> I I'll, I'll say it, it really, it, I, ran that, I, did, I didn't pull out so, Right. It, well, and it depends on your background too, right? If right. Uh, if you're if you're familiar with getting Postgres up and running, if you're familiar with using uh, with setting up certs, you're going to have a big advantage uh, right. over other folks. And my question is, is like if, if those aren't things because you're not doing a production deployment of this, but you just need to add some piece of functionality to uh, plug in or maybe like something to the hub or you want to run it so you can test a UI thing you're working on. Right. Is there a quick way for a dev environment? <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the quick way for me is <laughs> is just just run it. Uh, <coughs> I've had people have success with Koji Dojo. So I'm sorry if it's not working. But I did, I'll try it again. Yeah, yeah try it again. Have been like just a weird yeah. Case of so I, I, I think. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So I, did, I think I think what needs to happen is one, we probably need to fix that doc, because that doc is technically complete, but maybe not. <laughs> or maybe just add like a quick start section of like for yeah. you know for quick and dirty dev, don't do this in production. Like you know, run these small set of steps. Yeah. Ta -da. Yeah, because like, if I was going to work on a uh, UI theme and I just wanted to have an instance of Koji running, like, I don't care about certs. Like, I just needed to be able to theme the UI in a VM on my laptop. I'm not saying I do that on a 
same amount of time. But we're, like, this is an yeah. example. Yeah. Well, thinking, if you want quick and dirty, don't use certs. Use password off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would never recommend you use password off anything remotely close to production for right. Koji because the password off in Koji is not good. It was really just a debug step on the way on the way of development. I, but um, but it's there. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. And 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 normally what what I do when I'm setting up first time is I set up I set up the password off first or, or and I don't I don't worry about off at first, right? Yeah. So get it running Make sure that I can hit the hub with no off. Just run a bunch of Koji dash dash no off commands or run Koji commands that, that don't need off. Like most of the read only commands just don't even try to authenticate. If you can get that working, then you know where you're, you, you know you're mostly there and it's just adding off on the end, which can be a pain, I know. Um, so, sorry if that's not a better answer. Than no, I was just curious <laughs> if there was like a recommended, yeah. you know, So, other questions, or is there anything you'd like me to demo? <laughs> I'd be happy to. We've got a live Koji instance sitting right here. We can do whatever we want to it. We can abuse my laptop. Yeah. Why uh, is that a use of XMRPC? Why is that not based on static JSON? JSON wasn't. Development started in 2005. <laughs> 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 well, there have been thoughts. Yes, there have been thoughts. Uh, I was last year. I, I I was proposing a number of things I wanted to do for for Koji that are very big and, and invasive, and and I definitely want to go to a JSON based RPC. Uh, I'm not sure how fast we could reasonably drop XMRPC realistically for you know for you know for entrenched Koji deployments at prominent North American Linux vendors. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if it's it's very much of just like last year you presented a platform that you do that Uh-huh. And this year you're presenting an how to hack on Koji one dot code. Uh <laughs> no this is how to hack on Koji, so uh so with the idea of working on Koji with the uh, with the idea of of of, of, of so, as far as 2.0 goes, uh, I think I had a bit of a, a different view on it now, which is that uh, Koji 2.0 obviously has not happened. And the reason it didn't happen partially, besides me being uh, too busy with other stuff, is um, that it was a lot. <coughs> Very big, very ambitious 
very risky set of changes. And uh, so I think the better plan is to really focus on, instead of trying to put them all in one ball and say, let's make, do, have, we have to do all these things before we can call it 2.0. Let's focus on the things we can do individually. <coughs> Content generators are in. We're working on adding more testing, and it makes it easier to development. Uh, we're working on uh, Python 3 work, work is underway. Um, working on uh, reworking the SSL code. So uh, various bits and pieces that were in 2.0 have landed are under development, uh, but when we call it 2.0, it, it, we may call it 2.0 sooner rather than later before all the things along the 2.0 list are done, and then maybe we'll go 3.0 before long, 4.0, because I think there's just too much, I don't know, emotional impact of that 2.0 number. I think we just need to get over it and, and move the API on bit by bit. Yeah. Uh, Ralph, sorry, you had a question before. Yeah, I do. Uh, so, you know, pretty much all over my life, you know, work that I had so far, I know that we are trying to push the semantic tasks like isolation into coaching. The only problem is that, you know, right now we have two rounds for both the ground, you know, and uh, the projects. Uh, and we've already had conversation that maybe we create some generic, you know, either plugin or something that they can comment and they can actually supply that data for the task. So the my question is, you know, is there any plan for some sort of generic task where we could supply, you know, let's say our own executable, just like Andrew, but it would have some metadata that we could we could process and we could actually you know like query tasks or some our filter tasks tasks based on the you know metadata. I remember there, there were some other papers like ISO, I think it was also in start files and other things that I used. And I think that if we would just write plugin or you know something for each of them, it would be too much time consuming. But we can have something generic and just use the data to distribute the content. So Well, I sure I I, 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 I Wait, we, we talked about this before, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not three years ago. <laughs> I think it was three years ago. Yeah. I, 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 it's, it, this sounds like what I was talking about at one uh, when I was adding the uh, uh, yet another image tool support into into Koji, and it was basically the same code as the other image tools, except really all that was changing was what command we were running in the tree and and what sort of things we were pulling out. So it, it occurred to me that maybe there was some way to make that generic and 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 have it be uh, almost like a spec, an image spec that, you know, when, you, when we run RPM, we do RPM builds, there's a spec and you build the RPMs in all sorts of different ways and the spec says, this is how you build it, this is what comes out. You could do the same thing for images and then allow images to use different tools and have different outputs specified in the spec and then we don't have to write new plugins and new features in the Koji every time somebody comes up with a new image tool. We just, they just let them change the spec. I don't know. Um, so the thing is that I know that we are making, you know, some changes to Bungie, and I know that we want to build this in the code, and I know that we don't want to write, you know, several plugins. So, you know, if you want to think about it, and, you know, probably sure, then I guess, like, half a year or a year, that's something that we can work with. All right. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I want to make a pitch to the room that I hope you shouldn't do the testing. Yes. That's like 7% coverage right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we, we started just testing the hub, and we got it up to 25% coverage, and then we started looking at the other parts that we see a lot of performance, and we added all that new code, and the coverage percentage went down. But if we focus on one, one particular part of the hub, we can make a lot of progress, and that really helps. We get a fresh clone, and my checkout's got weird extra stuff in it. In my opinion, it's one of the things that stands in the way of doing a lot of the other things we want. We want to get all fortunate by free. There's fear that we would break everything, but if we have a test gate, then we can run on high two, run on high three, and verify that they both work. So we can run on high two, run on high three, and verify that they both work. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
and then things like refactoring of the Lipman Dots and the Ruby Hook Dot Pipeline in the local models for the next thing for the consumable and the We should all do that. 15%. See? Twice what you said. Hey, Lonnie? Yeah? Uh, I have a question. Is there, have you found any other, um, anyone else that's interested in the main spacing types of things? Like, uh, no, so this would be uh, the task that the, 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 the build main spacing? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in it. Um, it's... Uh, Is that incompatible with doing that work in Koji 1? Or... It's... More fundamental so it breaks a deeply held assumption, which is that NVRs are unique. And we assume that MVRs are unique in a lot of different ways, right? So uh, you, you run get build and you give it an MVR, you call get build with an MVR, you expect to get one answer back, not 10. But now you, you could get 10 with that. Uh, file paths, it, it, tricky. I mean, I've got uh, the, 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 the work that I did on a few years ago that never landed. <laughs> uh, did some gymnastics to get a, to, to work around the the, the file system uh, namespace thing, but but to do it right, really you want to get away from using the MVR in the in the in the build path at all. Um, but again, you change that, and people are going to get mad. <laughs> yeah. The actually, majority of the team has the same problem right now. We are building modules which are you know they consist of five teams. And each module actually has its own disk that we, we are supplying. And we are actually building, you know, like a package macros on the fly, which is part of the builder. It's kind of package takes time. And it's a great request for setting the disk tag, you know, just directly to the target, I believe. Uh, so we can regulate it. However, we can use namespaces, namespaces as well. And the uniqueness of the VR is a problem for us. So, you know. Yeah. So, what is that, is that you know? What if, what if like, what if an in the event an is applied the default, like just have a default namespace and that's, well, that, that's that's the, the implementation that I have uh, does yeah. uh, have a default namespace. So you kind you kind of have to do it that way. Yeah. And I think people. I didn't realize kinda, there are. Uh, I didn't realize there was already implementation. There's implementation that it's not ready to go <laughs> go in there. Cool. Um, there's there's a it, you know again if we had a a you know, test suite would help, but also just so many calls change your behavior, change your behavior with it with when, when you add this one simple change. So right. it's tricky. Um, but we can talk about that. Uh, I think I have an amount of time. Yep. One minute. One minute. All right. So last. So no time for a demo. Any, any last minute questions? Well, thank you guys for coming. Thanks for listening. Uh, I hope. Uh, I'm now. I'm done with this. I have my mind is clear, and I'm happy to talk about any sort of random Koji things you guys want to talk about. So just hit me up in the hallways. Uh, uh, we, you know, I'm probably going to be doing some hacking on Koji while I'm here. So yeah, just come talk to me. Thanks. Thank you.